Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to make more stuff for you in Blender. So the way this works is I'm going to work on some resources for you and then by the end they should be available somewhere, whether they're on Gumroad or Patreon or freely available depending on what it is. But I don't know what I'm going to be working on yet, so I'm just going to flip a coin and take a look. So, skull for previous products, pattern for old experimental files. That's skull. So let's find out which product I'm going to add to. Generating number three. Oh, number three is ambient grunge. I did want to get back to this one. So this is ambient grunge for Blender. It's basically like a node group that helps you get kind of automatic ambient occlusion slash grunge effects on any model you apply it to. There was a full version and a free version on the same product, but I kind of realized too late that when you have a free tier on a product on Gumroad, if someone leaves a review on that free tier, then it appears here as well. So basically for the people that couldn't understand how to use the free tier, usually like people brand new to Blender, they'd leave a review and now it reflects on the full product so I've learned to keep them separate on Gumroad but that's how it is. Ambient Grunge is something I've actually done a lot of work on in the years between like the last update but it was integrating geometry nodes and that kind of complexified things a bit because geometry nodes has changed a fair bit over time and then I was sort of integrating it with the biogen add-on because it required some extra functionality for like generating AO texture maps for objects but now might be a good opportunity to kind of just like reset to the previous version and then do micro changes and see what we can do. So for my product files there's one thing I wanted to do as well which is kind of standardize the file layouts for them because I would kind of have everything in a bit of a mess with multiple versions of the same file active which is annoying when you're making asset library files for Blender because if you've got you know multiple files with the same assets flagged then they will appear multiple times in your asset browser for example down here so we've got two versions of the ambient grunge node two versions of the material so what I'm going to do is move everything that I've currently been working on into a private folder and then in public I'm going to grab the currently available public version of the file and then we'll work from there so there are two main files available on the Gumroad there's the actual ambient grunge v4 and an example bricks file let's take a look at them so the main file looks like this and that looks a bit different to how I remember but obviously time has passed so I may be using like the different view transform in terms of like the color management Let's bring that up. So it's on Filmic. I typically use AGX. Still very dark though. I'll need to play with that. Obviously I've got like different control values. The lighting here is quite old as well. Maybe I could add a little bit of one of my Afterglow like studio presets into this to improve the lighting. Let's check out the other file. So the second file was an example bricks one where I had this kind of like brick or tile layout because they're quite reflective. And it basically demonstrated how the node looks and how you can modify like the level of grunge between each of the tiles. So the effects Still looks good. What did I also want to do? I wanted to integrate some of our hex scatter work. If you're new here, by the way, hex scatter is another tool that we were working on for generating infinite materials from non seamless texture sources. And I thought that it would be a good use case to like take some uh, grunge maps effectively in real life that are not seamless and then pass them through hex scatter to use them as like grunge layers for ambient grunge. So rather than relying entirely on procedural methods, which this is at the moment, so this is just combinations of layers of procedural noise generating the grunge effect then we would also integrate some real life sources but in a way that effectively behaves very procedurally but because part of the challenge of doing videos like this is to encourage me to actually put out changes I can't do anything too big in this video so it's an interesting challenge in trying to see how ambitious I want to be so before we get on with that I'm just going to rename the files because it's a micro change I'm going to name it to 4.1 maybe actually I'll do it on the main file so 4.1 and maybe 4.1. Talking about that idea of bringing in real life samples, I would need a way to um, actually get the grunge map. So obviously I could like put dirt on glass and then set up a camera in a certain way, but then that would obviously require doing something in the studio, which I do have space for, I've got a lot of space for that, even off in that direction, but that might be a bit too much. So let's think more in demonstration use cases. Can I make variations of the material and or node group just to give people more options when they're using it? First of all, let me update the lighting because that's one thing I noted right at the beginning. So lights, let me include the light catcher in that lights category there. It looks like we might have an HDRI active. No, oh, let me just check what it looks like in Eevee as well though. Yeah, that works pretty well in Eevee. Quite live as well, see that? Actually, maybe I won't go over emissive lighting because then it won't work as nicely in Eevee. But let me just think about this. I want to backlight it a little bit more. Do I need that side light? Probably not. Maybe if I bring that down a bit, shift T, point it there, scale down. Yeah, let's get a little bit of a stronger light there. Just rotate that a bit. Bit of a harsher light. There we go. Just making subtle improvements. I just wanted to make it a bit more rimmy there. And we could add some color, but I want to keep it white because we're trying to assess like the actual grunge effect. 
All right, so the big question, why is it so dark color-wise? I'm going to need to try and like relearn all of my nodes now. Coloring muck. Okay, so we got a section for building the grunge texture. Oh, I've got new noise nodes, actually. Since making this, I made another pack with procedural patterns. And inside of that, there's some more complex types of dirt that I had worked on. So I wonder if I can actually just substitute the noise textures with these other nodes and whether that would look like an improvement as well. Okay, for some reason, because I think like extra details or values have been added to the noise nodes over time. So now I need to make a bit more space in my file because everything's been kind of clumped together. So let's think about that. Before I start, let me drag in Dirt Complex and Dirt Grunge, give them the object coordinate. I'm just going to plug them into the color and see what happens. So that's Dirt Grunge. I think that's pretty good. Obviously high detail, it kind of generates more as you zoom in. Perfect procedural. Yeah, nice distribution, close and far. And this is Dirt Complex. This one's got kind of, um, but it's supposed to be more like if water evaporates and you got dirt there. So obviously these have different like kind of tonal values to them in terms of the grays. If I do a mixed color between these like that, so that's just mix. If I like subtract it, okay, interesting. We lose some finer details, but we do get those almost like water evaporation patterns. What about difference? If we did, did a difference between them, the midpoint kind of mellows out the grunge a bit, but it's kind of less obviously like a dirt effect. Or maybe that is, well, that could be a good rust as well, actually. So obviously I'm just experimenting with this outside of the actual grunge node group so far. You know, I'm not sure if I like difference. I'm going to go back to maybe subtract or something. Gives us a bit of like a clearer grunge effect. And then if I plug a color ramp in quickly, so we're going to pass that as the mask down here. If I drag the black slider up, so that should give us like kind of layer control over it. So if I grab the white and give that a color, there we go. And obviously I can make it something like just brownie, dusty instead. And then zooming in, I can control that subtract value so we can add a bit more. So make it granularly a bit more dusty or kind of separate it a bit. Okay. So these two node groups do work quite well as a noise mask. What I might do is I might just copy those quickly and we're going to like re-enter the ambient grunge node group and just put them in here, making sure that I add the texture coordinate nodes. And then let's get back to using ambient grunge. Now from here, it's actually a little bit tricky to see exactly what each of the node groups the previous noise textures does in terms of affecting the grunge effect. I say if we're going to add anything, we do it close to the beginning. So let's move that up and we're going to bring ours closer to the top. Maybe I'll put them inside of the node here. So there's basically the addition of patterns and then the subtraction of patterns. And that's what gives us our kind of final result. Now it's all done in a black and white mask method because building the texture in this node layout here. And I know that I'm not showing you all the nodes at once because it's a product, remember? So use your own intuition. Show us the nodes. We'll buy me a coffee and you can look at the nodes forever. All right, so let's go mix color here and we are going to plug that in and then pass that down okay so if we added white to our additive mask it basically like removes a bunch of the stuff from before let me reset the color ramp and uh, put that in as the second mix so now because it's on one we should be looking almost exclusively at our new pattern actually that looks pretty nice in there i would like to make it uh, additive that's right yep there we go so we've got old grunge and then we're effectively adding a little layer of new grunge old new could do with a bit more in the way of cleanup I can mess with the scales a bit, maybe increase them slightly. It's definitely nicer having some of these like kind of high frequency ones in between these larger shapes from the old grunge. Let's get that a bit smaller, like blotches of like evaporated water again. Okay, that's quite good. Obviously we need some cleanup, but there are um, controls for cleanup anyway. So you've got like a muck cleanup value. Um, I've got an edge wear value here, but it seems to be doing inner edges as well as outer edges. So maybe I need to fix that actually. But if we put that to zero, this is our effect. So the muck cleanup value is basically supposed to simulate like if you've got a dirty environment, Imagine someone's coming on with like a brush and sweeping away some of the muck. Then it would happen from the outside first, but it would leave some of the inner corners with that muck remaining. So you can up the muck cleanup value and then you can control the muck level from there. Even at zero though, we can still see some of the the grunge in there. So there may be an element of like balancing values. However, if you do want to control it, there's a muck range minimum and maximum. So you can just drag that all the way down. So this is effectively your range on a color ramp. So if I remove the muck cleanup and then put the muck range max down, aha, I see. So these are kept separate. So we still have some muck, even though this inner bit is going down. So maybe I need to fix that. And we need to somehow connect these with the muck range. I'll take a look. It's a complex node, right? So there's going to be some technicalities in the control. 
All right, I'm making an executive decision. So after having a little peruse through the node group, it's so different to how I would do things if I started from scratch now, which is making me inclined to do exactly that. So instead of doing the whole thing in one node group, I'm going to take lessons from my more recent work and make everything modular. So we'll have like a mask group, which could be substituted for like other variations. So say, for example, we did like the hex scatter type of grunge uh, masking, then we could do that. And these could all be assets. So they could all appear in the asset browser as well. So that'd give us more to share with people. Separately from that, there'll be like coloring. So maybe there'll be like a coloring group and then there'll be like a uh, dust so we have like uh, a kind of different level of dust because that's another thing that could be done with the node if we turned up the dust level it'd be more it'd be like a more generalized effect and then we could do like a cleanup so the cleanup could be kind of simulating the same thing where it just like subtracts everything and maybe the cleanup could be like put in a different order but the idea being that if i just modularize everything then we've actually got all of these different steps of building up the grunge effect that could be substituted for other nodes as well so instead of of there just being one it would allow people to like mix and match to build up their preferred variation of the ambient grunge node if that makes sense so i think maybe that's what i should do for version five because it'll be a big step up so, okay so ideally i wanted there to be a few more changes before i upload this for people but we have of course just slightly improved the actual texture effect in there the masking by adding the procedural patterns so what i will do is i will upload this now as version 4.1 and then i'm going to get straight on to working on version 5 and separating them into that kind of modular pattern if that makes sense but this is still a good thing because this is why i'm doing this exact guide system to put these products back in front of me to get me thinking about them again how would i restructure them how do i make them more useful for people so now i know i wouldn't have thought about this otherwise but now i might as well update the um, example bricks file as well let's get the new version of ambient grunge in all right, there we go. So that's a slightly new version of Ambient Grunge on the example tiles. All right, so I've just uploaded the files to Gumroad and Blender Market. Thank you for coming along with me in this video. Now I know what direction to go with this and it'll make it easier to modify in the future and again, add more variation if you want to bring in the other tools to combine with it. If you made it this far, put some kind of, I don't know, there's not like a dirt emoji, is there? Remember on Windows, you can press the Windows key and the period key to bring up an emoji keyboard. There's poo, I don't know if we should do the poo emoji. A worm emoji maybe, something like that. Or a brick emoji. Make your choice. If you put that in the comments, I'll see if you did make it this far. Of course, you can sign up to my Patreon to support me, my work, my tool development, my education, and the rest of my resources can be found on curtisholt.online slash store. So thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.